Andre Wars, the middleweight champion. We're here for the Brandon Rios and Mike Alvaro re rematch. How do you break down this fight? Man, it's hard. It's a hard fight to break down. It's not a breakdown kind of fight. It's a fight where you got two guys that are, you know, they're straightforward fighters. I mean, Mike Alvarado can do, you know, some different things. But I just think, at the end of the day, the pressure uh, of Rio may get to him again. But again, with these kind of fights and these kind of fighters, anything can happen. Are you the type of fighter to where you keep your eye on the sport year-round that you're a true fan of the sport as well? You said, am I? Yeah, I'm at Man, I'm a fan of the sport. I was a fan of boxing before I even started boxing. So, you know, on a night like now, I come and get a seat and I watch. Number one, I'm a fan, but number two, I'm always, it's always something you can learn. It's always something you can pick up from, from anybody. So, I come and I watch the, the prelims, the younger guys, and uh, all the way to the main event. How disappointing was it to see the Kelly Pavlik fight fall apart because of your injury? For me, at first it was, it was extremely difficult. I mean, very difficult. But I understand this business and there's things that happen, you know, and once you get past the shock of it actually happening, you got to start trying to figure out how to get back and come back stronger. And that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. How much do you feel boxing is a mental game and how much is physical? Man, I think it's... It's hard to give a percentage, but you better have the mental in the sport of boxing. There's been a lot of guys that have skill, uh, a lot of guys that, that, that you know, just have those kind of tangibles, but the, the intangible, the mental game, can take you further than skill can sometimes. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your history of Virgil Hunter? How did you guys start working together? Man, we started when I was uh, nine years old. Uh, I was training with another trainer at a gym, and his style was to get hit two times to get one shot. And my dad, you know, he always wanted me to learn to be a master of, of the sport of boxing. And so as I was training with that guy, Bert saw me boxing, and um, him and my dad started talking, man, and he started working with me, and we've been together ever since. You're a fighter. You've been a staple on HBO. HBO, they recently announced they're not going to work with Golden Boy. How does that affect the landscape, bro? You know what? It's, it's, it's hard to say right now. Um, at the end of the day, I wish everybody could get around so the, the big fights could be made for the fans. Okay. So uh, they could be treated to the type of matchup they're supposed to be treated to. At the end of the day, that situation is out of my hands. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'm with HBO. And, you know, this is my home right now. And I just want to make sure that when I step into the ring, that I'm putting on the kind of performance where people want to keep tuning in and where people want to keep going to HBO to see the fight. You had mentioned you're going to back uh, your friend Robert Guerrero against Mayweather. Were you surprised when he got in a little trouble in New York with the guns? Sure. Yeah, man, it was, uh, when I woke up to people tweeting me about it, I thought it was a joke or something, and um, I'm not even in a position to talk about it at all because I have, I really only know what, what I'm hearing, but I know Robert Guerrero's a great guy, man. It seems like it was a, a situation where it was a technicality that they got him on. It's just unfortunate, man, that, that he would have to be associated with that kind of news when he's not that kind of person. Okay. Now, Virgil Hunter once told me, when I asked him about your kind of, where you stood in the pound for a pound, he said, me and Andre Ward don't even think about that. We said we're going to look at his career when it's over. What, can you elaborate on what that means? I look at it. I look at it simply because, you know, it's, you know, I've always had, I always wanted to be the best, you know, and it's like even right now, being fortunate to be number two, it's like, you know, with all due respect to Mayweather, I'm not competing for the number two spot. Like, my goal has always been since I started boxing to be the best. Um, I think Mayweather deserves that spot right now. He's had a lot more championship fights. He's accomplished a lot more. But, you know, my goal is to be in that top spot one day. Were you disappointed that he had the comments about your career and stuff like that? I mean, what? Well, I think first it was false. I mean, if you do your research and you look at ticket sales and that kind of thing, I'm a tremendous draw in Oakland. I've never been to Vegas, yeah. so we don't know what kind of draw that I'm in in Vegas. But it's unfortunate that a person – where Floyd is in his status, you know, I didn't disrespect Floyd. I've been yeah. following Floyd for many, many years, and I, I've been more than a fan. I've been a supporter. And, you know, like I said on the media, you know, through the, through the media, that if he had a problem with me, the way I go about things and the way I feel men should go about things is to pick up the phone, talk about him, and, and we get it worked out like that. But, you know, it's no love lost for Floyd. I understand Floyd, and I understand where he's coming from. And it's a big fight coming up, and I think he got, you know, he must have got his feelings hurt over what I said. But I wasn't being disrespectful. When I said what I said, I just simply said that I'm going to support my friend in this fight, and, that, and I stand by that. Well, I was always curious, what is your opinion on Adrian Broner, just his personality and his skills in the ring? I can't speak on his personality. I mean, Adrian does what he does, and if that's how he feels like, um, 
that's what's going to get him where he needs to go, then that, that's Adrian's business. I mean, I'm going to go about it the way I feel. I need to go about it. But in terms of in the ring and what Adrian Broner possesses, he's got the good. All Adrian has to do is stay focused, and I, I think he can become a great fighter one day. What do you think about him against Paulie Malinaji? I think that's a, I think that's an interesting matchup. I think that's a tougher matchup than, than, than what people think. Really? I mean, Paulie's a 47 pounder no matter how you swing it. And I think Paulie said himself, you know, people can talk about his punch, lack of punching power, but that's a 147-pound man hitting you. But that being said, it's a great fight for Adrian to step up and show what he can do against a 47-pounder, another chance, opportunity to win a title, become a three-time champ. And it's Paulie's chance to, to you know, try to, to try to be a, a, hot, a hot guy that's coming up and, and to put himself in position. Since you've become, gotten some fame and also, you know, some good earnings, some good money, do you feel that's changed you at all, or are you still grounded the same person? I mean, I, I, I feel like I've changed, but hopefully changed for the better. I mean, uh, you're going to change as you keep, you're going to, I want to say it the right way, you're going you're gonna to change as you keep, you know, uh, elevating in whatever it is that you do, because people around you change, the situation changes, things change, so you're going to change, but you hopefully change for the better. All right, thanks. Great talk with you.